Hey dudes and dudettes, welcome to another video. It's Simon Hurley here, and today I wanted to do a video series where I test out different card making trends that I've missed in our industry, our products that have kind of been on trend. Usually I don't follow all the trends, and sometimes I just end up missing some of them by accident. And so in today's video, I'm going to be testing what's up with all the hype around blending brushes. This is something that's been going on for the past like year and a half. It seems like everybody and their mother has blending brushes now, and it's definitely something that I've missed out on because I've just kind of been happy with the blending tools that I've been using. So in today's video, I'm gonna test out the Ranger blending tool that I love with different blending brushes on the market and see kind of what's the difference, what's all the hype around it, and if you can use them both for different things. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so I have an assortment of blending tools here. These are blending brushes that you can get from Simon Says Stamp. I like them because they come in a pack of five and they're all the same size, which is pretty nice. And they have colors, which are nice and fun for your craft room. So you can make it the different colors um, of inks that you're using. And then these ones are from Picket Fence Studios, which were some of the first to create the blending brush. But these come in an assorted pack. So you get kind of a larger one. I kind of, I think I lost a few of them. And then there's also these smaller ones. I'm not sure how useful some of these kind of toothbrush looking ones are gonna be, but this one might be useful for little areas and stencils. And then of course here are the blending tools that I use every day. And these Ranger detail blending tools too. I wanted to pull these out because this is what I use for detailed areas like this. All right, so let me test my tried and true. I pulled out three inks that I know are gonna blend really well together. And I'm using my stark white cardstock because I know that blends really well with these inks as well. So I'm going in with the Prom Queen ink and I'm just gonna start off with my regular blending tools and show you guys how I use them. Now I know one of the problems with these has kind of been creating harsh marks and things like that. The one thing that I like about my inks is that they're really able to blend out and not create super harsh marks on your projects. So I know that a lot of people who have purchased my inks have said that even with these blending tools, they love using them because they're not getting harsh marks and they're having an easy time blending out to white. But I do get it, it might be a little bit difficult to use. One of the tips that I have is that I can tap off and then go onto the surface and that can get rid of some of the harsh marks that you accidentally might create. But one thing I love about that tool is you can see just how fast and easy that it is to apply the color down. That's one of the reasons that I really haven't gotten into blending brushes because I love the vibrant saturated color and I find you can't really get that look super easily with the blending brushes, but we'll test it out in a second. So I'll go in here with a little bit of Guppy and blend that together. I wanted to test kind of the blendability and how the inks blend with each other with the different tools to see if it's different, but again, that vibrancy is something you can't really beat. Then we'll go in with Clear Skies to finish it off and just blend that together. And here we create a nice purple and a nice green in there too. So I wanted to just give you guys a little demo of kind of how I usually blend with the blending tools. These have been my favorite since I first started crafting just because how easy it is to apply a really nice solid color and you can get a lot of color down pretty quickly. So let's go in with another piece of my stark white cardstock and let's test out these blending brushes. So I'm gonna grab one that looks kind of pinkish purplish. I'll grab my Prom Queen ink. One thing I, I've kind of struggled with these is how I should hold them. This can sometimes hurt my finger a little bit because I have used blending brushes a couple times before, mainly when I was doing videos with Rena. So I'm going to apply a little bit of ink onto here. It seems like, okay, there we go. It seems like we got quite a bit of ink on the surface there. And then I'll go in, let's test out like this first because I think this will give us a softer look. I'll go in here and blend that out. So like I said, it does definitely give you a softer effect. And I don't really think that there's much control with these brushes. I kind of feel like this part is a little bit floppier, but also since I'm holding from this section, it's hard to give a lot of pressure since it gives and bends. So like even when you apply more pressure, it's still gonna apply the same amount of pressure down, which is kind of a strange feeling. Um, going from a handled tool to this. So definitely not as solid of color. That's one reason why I haven't really switched over to blending tools or blending brushes is because it's kind of more difficult to get a nice solid color. So let's see, if I put my finger on it like this, 
it gives me a little bit more solid coverage, but I still feel like I have to go back and forth and really get in there to get that. But after a couple layers, it definitely is giving me a solid coverage there. All right, so let's go in with a little bit of guppy now. I want to test how these blend together from one side to the next. So let's go in with guppy and bring that in here. And so they do do a really nice job at blending together and giving a nice color blend in between there. I still feel like the color is a little bit softer and it's not like sinking into the cardstock as much. And this is kind of uncomfortable to hold it like this. I gotta be honest for a while. Um, it's kind of uncomfortable to hold a little bit. I think especially if you have, see that was barely any color at all. I think especially if you have problems with your hands, this might be a little bit more difficult to hold since there's no real support here. Okay y'all, that is not how that color is supposed to look. See, that's one thing. I feel like it's not as like smooth. Okay, this was after I think three layers already of the color and this is definitely not how Clear Skies is supposed to look. It looks kind of like you can see the grains of the paper more and a little bit uneven of blending. That's one thing I noticed with the blending brushes is this is my blending tools from Ranger. You can see it really gets into the tooth of the paper and adds a really nice solid and smooth color. Whereas this kind of goes on top of those grains and you can still see a little bit of like unevenness in the inks. I don't know. Okay, I'll go in with a couple more layers and see if we can kind of fix it. I think for an impatient person like me, this might not always be the way to go since this background definitely did take longer to do with the brushes, but it does have a nice smooth effect. I think like I said too, some of the grains of the paper you can kind of see in there, like it doesn't give as even or smooth of a finish once it's all complete. Um, I think because it's such a lighter pressure that it's just going over the cardstock instead of really sinking into the tooth of the cardstock. Um, and this is pretty darn smooth paper too. Look, you can barely even see that ink that's going on. And I think this is definitely a big benefit to it. I think this is one thing you really can't do with a lot of blending tools on the market is get a color that's that soft from a color that's this vibrant, right? So let me go in here. Okay, you guys are gonna think I'm crazy, but in real life, this is really soft and kind of fills up this whole area. I don't know if you can really see it well on camera, but that is something that's impressive. You definitely can get a really, really soft blend that you really can't achieve with many other tools on the market. Okay, so now let's go through a stencil. I'm gonna do my blending brushes on this side of the bubble wrap stencil, and on this side, I'll do my blending tools and kind of test them out to see. So let's go in with a little bit of clear skies. Go in here with my blending brush. I'll really load that thing up. And then we'll go in and kind of blend it out. And I want a much darker color on the other side, but this time I'm using the Ranger blending tool. So I'm just going to go in here and blend this out. I like just the super solid color you can get right away without having to really build up the color too much. But I'm kind of blending out to show you guys. So this is the blending tool side, this is the blending brush side. You honestly can get a very similar effect. I think through stencils, with this tool even, it's very easy to go um, and get a much softer look because you just kind of stop blending or, or use a little bit of a lighter pressure to get that blend outward. So I think with stencils, either way is a good way to go. With this one, I did have to build up a few more layers to get the actual color that I did want. So I think for me, this is better for stencils just because you're gonna get easier, faster coverage of that nice solid color. All right, so with more detailed stencils like this or with areas that you have, areas that you wanna avoid on the stencil, I actually prefer the blending tools over the blending brushes just because, like I said, a bristle can go anywhere at any minute. Um, there's no real end that you know of, so like if I'm going over here, a, a bristle could easily get into that area. Whereas with the sponge on this one, I know that even if I go right up to the edge of this, I'm not going to get into that area unless if my whole sponge goes in there. So that's one thing I like. I find that I have more control with this tool and have to mask off areas less. And if you know me, I'm a lazy crafter and I like having to mask things off less. 
Okay, so let's gather our kind of final thoughts here. The one thing that I noticed with the blending brushes that is a little bit strange, and I wanted to wait till it dries to see if it would smooth out, is just the weird texture you get with it. I don't know if it's something with the brush or how the brush is interacting with the cardstocks or different textures on the paper, but I find that it kind of captures a little bit more texture with the blending brush than I do with the blending tools from Ranger. I like the finish of this a little bit more with the blending tools. I think it gives more of a smooth look. The one thing I do have to give the blending brush props for is the ability to really easily fade into the edge. That's one thing that I like about this tool, and I think if you're making a background directly in the center that you want to be light and really super faded, this might be the way to go if you're just blending straight to the cardstock. For me, these blending brushes are gonna be used for really soft edges if I need that, or if I want a super light, light, light wash of color. I think for other things, they're not the best for me. I think they waste a little bit of time, whereas with these, I find they're more comfortable. I can add a quicker wash of dark color down, and I also like the finish that it gives a little bit more and the control you have with these tools. I think there's a time and place for both, and maybe if you're really heavy-handed and struggle blending with these, maybe do some backgrounds with these until you really figure out the pressure, because these will give you a super light pressure, and you can really build up Whereas these, you kind of have to have a little bit more control with your hands. All right guys, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Click that subscribe button down below so you never miss another video like this one from me. And leave a comment down below. Let's chat about these blending brushes and what you guys think of them. Do you think they're comfortable? Do you like them on your card making projects? I would love to chat with you guys down there. All right, without further ado, I'll see you guys very soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye.